What's happening, everybody? We are here with Nick Santiastasso. The majority of you, when I say the word failure or defeat, you will immediately correlate it with negative. If we can change that perspective, we can get you guys to walk out that door and start embracing failure. We wouldn't know what the wins feel like if we never lost. What's happening, everybody? We are here with Nick Santiastasso. Yeah, I got it. I'll take it. I was Santa close though, right? No, it was not money. It was close. He got it. We'll put subtitles for that part. No, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So like, here's the thing: is I'm, as I'm, as I'm terrible with names, but like faces lock into my brain forever. Yeah, like, they're locked in forever. Yeah. So for my audience that doesn't know who you are, um, type him into Google because I don't want to go too deep into your entire backstory because I really want to crush the value of what we're going to do right now. Yeah. Um, this man is amazing. And I was sitting in the audience when he was speaking yesterday, and he went through this gratitude exercise. Now, I go through a gratitude exercise every morning, but it was a little different. But first, before we even get into that, give him a little taste of kind of who you are, what you're about, and your backstory. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, little so bit. I'm Nick Santa Nastasso. I'm 22 years old. I was born in... Um, Jersey and I was born with hand heart syndrome and what that is is a super rare genetic disorder that either leaves the babies with undeveloped limbs or undeveloped organs and so I was the 12th baby at the time in 1996 eight of them have passed I survived and so just happy to be here uh, you know being a unicorn and so you know growing up just my, my parents treated me normal kind of was like yo this is your situation you got to ride with it and kind of just helped me cultivate that mindset of just like Falling on my face and getting back out, figuring out, you know, it's not camp, but how, you know, you know, stimulating solutions. And then um, I went out through my life, had some low points and started doing wrestling, started doing vining. And then that took over to um, bodybuilding. And so I started bodybuilding. I competed in bodybuilding, built the following there um, and then did the modeling and now the speaking. And now music, too. <laughs> Dude, I was I, it's, it's so hard to impress me. Like, it's very difficult. I've heard a lot of speakers, the best in the world. I've paid ridiculous amounts of money to be in those rooms. Dude, you floored me yesterday. Like I was you, so impressed. And it was kind of pre-framed by Dan Fleischman, like our boy. It was like, dude, he's the best. And I'm like, the really the best? <laughs> and I was, dude, I was I was crying. It was it was it was incredible. Thank you. But it wasn't just Shout out to Dan. Dude, shout out to Dan Fleischman. Yeah, like, shout yeah. out to Dan. And it wasn't just how you framed the whole talk. But dude, it was from as deep into your soul as it could come. Yeah. And it was real, man. Like, it's so important for me. The secret sauce. The secret <laughs> sauce. Oh, it, shout out to your video about the, dude. Oh. <laughs> okay. Go look up. It's on YouTube, right? It's on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Dude, this, it's called the secret sauce, right? It's called how, to, how I make my sauce. Yeah. It's just an Instagram video. It's fire. Go look it up. But it was this, it was this journey that you took the whole audience on about you and about gratitude and about how we're all the same and that we can hold our chests. And when you, dude, I, I had my spot instantly because he, he's like, put both of your hands on your chest, yeah. take six deep breaths, which I do every morning because yeah. it changes your state. Yeah. It physically changes your nervous system, which I'm so down with. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, I like this guy already. Yeah, I, was, I, was like, <laughs> I, I can fuck with this guy. Right now. And he was like, he's like, Find something that you're really grateful for. Dude, I, I went to that place. Boom. Yeah. And then what are you proud of? It's the same place. Yeah. And I walked that walk from the hospital, Hoke Hospital, Newport Beach, when I first had my son. That's usually what it is for dads. Dude. Yeah. Like, I remember walking to 7-Eleven, just bawling. Just like, my whole world just changed. Yeah. I, I, I'm a different person now. Because I'm, now I'm dad. Yeah. I'm not just Andy. I got this little little guy. I got this little guy I got to take care of. Dude, it was insane. And you and you brought me back there. So thank you for that. You got it. So much. You got it. it was Thanks like, for playing full out. Dude, that's the only way I roll. Yeah. I, have, I have first gear and sixth yeah. gear. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it was unbelievable the way that you, you walked us through the journey. But let's actually go back a little bit to your journey. Yeah. And when you decided, like, look, I'm going to wrestle. I've gone through some shit. I've had some shit in my head about some girls and just some stuff in life, right? Yep. We all go we through all shit. Have it. We yeah. all have shit. Yeah. yeah. But you're like, I'm going to fucking wrestle. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Yeah. Walk us through that real quick. 
Yeah, so my older brother was a wrestler. Yep. So I always looked up to my older brother. I always looked up to wrestlers, would go to his matches, support. But I never got to go to high school with him. And so from middle school, from middle school on, the coaches were like, Nick, when are you wrestling? You know, when are you getting your, your mm-hmm. brother tells you, you know, you roll around, like, let, when are you wrestling? And so it was always a problem with my arm. And so this arm was five inches longer than it is now. My bone was growing faster than my skin. And so it was my sophomore year, and, and I just got off the bowling team. I was like, I need something. I need something more. And all my best friends were wrestlers, you know, they wrestled for the high school and they were like, dude, you should try wrestling. And I'm like, I can't, you know, my arm. And they all knew about my arm. And so the bone was going faster than the skin. So if I would have touched it on anything, like bottom line is my bone when it came through my skin. And so I was like, I can't. And I talked about, you know, how the majority of not only entrepreneurs, but like human beings, we always, it's a, it's a natural habit to start with can't, you know, like, oh, well, we can't do this because this, this, and this. And, you know, like that's disempowering Mm. and so we want to use that how right not only just it's more empowering but it stimulates solutions and so I'm marinating on the idea of like how can I become a wrestler and so I came home one day and I waited for both my parents to come home and I sat them down and I was like listen you know I want to be a wrestler and my mom's like Nick like your arm you know like we've been through this you know god forbid you hit your arm your bone comes through your skin and I was like can we take care of it can we cut it off you know can we do something about it and they're like what do you mean I'm like, yeah, like I really want to wrestle. Like this, yeah. I, I, this has the opportunity to, you know, pivot me out of this dark hole. Like I, I want right. to wrestle, and you know, my my parents big supporters, right? I, they're like, you're a little crazy, but like, you know, we, we roll with it, and, and we and, got you. And yeah, we got you. Like we got we'll support you. you. And so my sophomore year, they they scheduled that appointment, and so they they lasered five inches off and did a skin graft, and you know, the surgery went super successful, and I was able to go out for my wrestling team, which like. I found my why there, you know, and, and I also instilled confidence in me, right? They, like my junior year, I got my butt kicked and, mm. you know, it was one in 20 and got a varsity forfeit. And I was like, I don't want it. You know, I didn't earn it. And then my senior year, I was able to come out as the 106 pound varsity wrestler and like lead the team out and feel like an athlete and a varsity wrestler and just this momentum behind me. And, you know, just motivating, having parents come up and thanking me for like shifting their kids perspective. I'm like, oh my God, you know, like maybe that's Maybe that's my thing. Maybe that's my calling. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's my thing. Like, I wasn't focused on that. I was getting my butt kicked and I was changing lives. Like, mm-hmm. imagine I f- focused my energy on that. And so wrestling, yeah, wrestling saved my life. Dude, and I, and I love the way that you framed the story around, I'm going to go get my arm chopped off <laughs> so I can wrestle. Yeah. Because I'm in a dark place and I want out. Yeah. Like, dude, we have, we, we have the power to pull ourselves out of these dark places. Oh, yeah. It, we all get in them. Yeah. I've, I've been in the, in the darkest. Still, we still go through them. 100%. We still have days where we wake up and like, am I doing enough? I had one of the hardest Decembers of my life. And from the outside looking in, everything is perfect. Yeah. But my internal struggles are real. Yeah. So I go through my own stuff. We yeah. all do. Yeah. But I think being wildly vulnerable and like exposing those things are what actually make us so relatable. Absolutely. Right? Like, I... I view my life or I live my life in a way of like, is, is this podcast or this story or is this me expressing this like deep stuff about me? Is this going to help someone? I'm in. Because like, that's what it is. It's like, people want to know that we're just like, we're, we're just people. We're just people. Like we go through the same things and we all battle with the same mental struggles up here. And so like, what better way to, you know, not only build a bond, but with your audience, but just like let them know like, yo, like we're the same people, you know, like you, you have everything inside of you right now to do whatever you want, you know, and, and we're just here to show you, like kind of guide you along the way. But like, we all struggle with the same things up here. I, I was having, I was having a rough morning, um, probably like a month ago, right? I woke up and I was just like, man, like you're not doing enough. And like, you're a bum. Like we have this, we had these I, thoughts. I get it. And I, I jumped it. on, I jumped on a zoom call. I jumped on a podcast and this guy's doing an intro and he's like, Nick has done this, 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 and I'm like, oh wow, I, you I really done, I really done, dude, dude, dude do all that stuff, you know, like, isn't it crazy how you forget? <laughs> yeah, because, and it's a, it's a humongous character defect of mine. I don't celebrate my wins enough, and I've yeah. been struggling with it for a long yeah. time. I'm getting better now yeah. because I have kids, but like, yeah. dude, I do not celebrate them enough because I'm so off to the next thing, and like you're the same way, yeah. right? You're like, I did that, cool. Okay, what's next? Like, yeah, I'm like, like. <laughs> You were a like, you were a competitive fitness model and bodybuilder, and then a runway model, and then like, what's next? And then actor. Like, dude, your resume is ridiculous. Thank you. But do you ever sit and be like, I did that? No. You're like off to the next. And I think that's a characteristic, right? That yeah. kind of. I think it's it, it's a curse and a blessing, right? It's a hundred curse and a blessing that 100%. you know we, there's we always want more, but there's never enough kind of right. thing. 
Um, and I think that like the balance of like playing that to your advantage is like you're always just grinding, right? But you need to like sit, self reflect and sit back and be like, man, like I I did all this and you know like I did good, like you know good good job, yeah, Nick, yeah. and good job, Andy. You know, I, like I know, and what's so funny is like that's all I really need. I told my wife, I'm like, if you tell me you're proud of me and I'm doing a good job, I'll build you an empire. Yeah, like okay. I'm super simple. Were, are you words of affirmation? The love languages? 100%. Yeah. Words of affirmation and physical touch. Yeah. And my wife is acts of service and, um, what is her second? Acts of service <laughs> and quality time. Yeah. Quality time. Yeah. Like, not even close. Yeah. <laughs> Total so, opposite. We are yeah. literally pull opposite. She's like, you're doing great. I love you. And I'm like, yeah, yes. <laughs> it's, it was a struggle. Yeah. But thank but you. you got there. Got you, you got there. But that was a struggle for me because I wanted her to want to do that. Yeah. But that's not her DNA. Yeah. So it took me a long time to actually pump that and be like, look, she's trying. Like, she's doing the best she can. Yeah. And that gave me freedom for us to get closer because I was starting to get resentful. I'm like, how come you don't just tell me you're proud of me? Yeah. Because it's mine. That was my stuff. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's so amazing for me to watch people like you from stage convey that with such conviction to really make an impact. Like to Thank change you. shit. Like we, we all have these narratives and these stories, right? We are in control of the whole frame when we decide. Yeah, when you step up and you want to steer. Right? Yeah. Like, so walk my audience through one of the hardest times you've had where you're like, fuck, I don't want to steer right now. I don't want to row. I don't want to yeah. drive, but I got to. Yeah. I was at a high school party. It was just, it was like a get together. It was a party. It was yeah, a party. yeah, it was a party. I was at a high school party, and you know, I have to sit. I have to. I was sitting in a regular chair because you know I'm not gonna walk around on the ground, you know. Mm. And just like seeing guys walk up to girls. That's like, a big trigger for you, right? Yeah, the girls, right? Yeah, yeah. Big yeah. And just seeing guys being able to walk up to girls, or just seeing guys be able to mingle. Mm. I'm like, I can't do that. Mm. You know, I left the party. I left the party early. I had my mom pick me up and I cried. I cried in my room mm. and just thought about like the stacking, right? And mm. just like, man, like I'll never be able to walk with a girl or, you know, I'll never have a girl or she'll never love on me. And, you know, we crave that. We, we crave that energy, you Attention. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah for, for sure. sure. And I was just like, man, like you're disgusting. Like the bottom line is like, you're, you're disgusting and like, don't even try like, you know, like we, and it was all those old stories came oh, back, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 And, and, and like I was saying, I didn't, I wasn't able to reframe that until after I graduated and realized, mm. you know, one of my, one of my buddies helped me out, but he was just like, listen, like if a girl doesn't, if girls doesn't want to rock with you for you, like that's an organic filter, like next, like mm. that's good. Like that's a superpower. And when you yeah. look at it like that, how empowering is that? You know, like that changed my life, but man, just, yeah, like just seeing, just seeing guys, you know, walk up to girls or having girls and just. That was like middle school and high school. That's a big deal, right? And so that was probably the biggest thing for me because I just I'm I'm a lover. Dude, I'm a lover, dude, dude. But I need you, I need love, dude. You, you know? and me both. I'm man. a lover. Like I like I want to be held. Yeah, literally. Like I want to be loved. <laughs> literally. That's I'm, what we all want. Physical it. touch, but literally, yeah. just like a hand on my head oh, it's a wrap. or a hand on my neck. Like mm. you don't even gotta do anything. I'm good. Like just I just need a little bit of energy. Just like recharge me a little bit. Like dude, just know that you're so there. Your presence, like. And there's a transfer of energy that happens, yeah. right? You're like, and you're touch, you're like, love. Yeah. All we really want as humans, I've been around love. this whole planet a hundred fucking times. It's not money. We, we want love. Yeah. And compassion. That's it. Yeah. Like, I know a lot of guys and gals with a lot of commas and zeros in the bank. Oh, yeah. Broken. Yeah. They would give all their money away to feel loved. Yeah. It's wild. And it's, 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 our, it's, our, it's like a basic need that we have to have as humans. Yeah. But we I crave it. We do. And I really want you to talk about stacking because it's really important. Yeah. And you talked about it a lot yesterday and you keep bringing it up and it's something I do constantly. We all do. Yeah. I help people, but there's, there's two ways to stack, right? You can stack on the positive or you can stack your ass. You can stack or you can hole, sink. Uh, or you can shovel, right? <laughs> yeah. Dude, 100%. So walk my audience through stacking. Yeah. Because we all do it. Yep. So first off, humans are like we're very disempowering creatures, like our mind, the way we work, yep. right? So we're natural, like we're primed to always focus on the negative. We're always focused on the things that we don't have, the things we want, or nip, like our flaws, everything. Like that's mm -hmm. what we do. And so with stacking, like if you ever notice, like if you start your day off on the right foot, so to say, right? If you start your day off on the, on the wrong foot mm -hmm. and like one bad thing goes happened, you tend to just like start thinking about all the bad things and like, oh, well, 
she didn't open the door. Like, just like little stuff. You just like stack these things and you're like, oh, I'm in traffic. Am I, am I, I had, I'll, I'll come back to this. I had a guy at an event, he was 60 years old and he came up to me crying and he said, I will never think the same again because of you. He said, I got in my car this morning and my tire pressure was off. I was pissed off. Then there was traffic. I thought, I thought the world, I, I thought it was, everything came crashing down. Anger. And he goes, you just smacked me in the face with like, dude, what, what are you doing? And, but like, we all do it. So I, like, it's not just like certain people, like we all stack, right? And so we stack in the negative way. We just start listing all the negative things and all the negative things in our life and just like digging ourselves in a deep hole. And the only way to get out of that is to reverse stack and start, what are all your wins, all your positive, reflect mm -hmm. on all those things and come out of that. Um, Tony Robbins talks about a story where he was driving, he was driving in like Laguna Beach in a, a drop top Bentley that Bentley gave him for free because of like just the way he was. And he was pit like something happened and he was just pissed. Like he was just like stacking, stacking, stacking. And it's just like, you have to, you have to start thinking about all the positives. And the reason why I share that is because like even top tier of the world, like we all go through it. So like, that's the biggest thing is to take a sense of comfort that you're not, you're not like weird, you know, like we all stack things, but like the only controller of it is this, like you got to start you gotta start feeding your mind with the right thoughts. Like our mind's a garden, right? And so like you need to be having positive thoughts and positive affirmations and people are like, man, that's mumbo jumbo. It's not, it's reprogramming your mind. 100%, and then you have the power to choose, right? Like, like we, we choose literally- Choose victim, have, victor, like, that's, yeah. That's literally, right there, boom, <laughs> there's the book. Yeah. But like, you get to choose and that's the thing and it's, and it's I'm so glad you said it yesterday, man, because I, I, I preach this constantly to myself, to my kids, to everybody. It's impossible to be in gratitude and anxiety. Yeah. It's impossible to be in full gratitude and depression. Yeah. It, it's physically impossible. Yeah. I'm so glad you hammered that yeah. into the crowd. And I watch the crowd as that's going in because that's just what I do. You analyze. I, yeah. I'm dun -dun -dun, like, dun -dun -dun, <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. Because it's real and it's controllable by us and it's free. Yeah. It's, yeah. And I was like, imagine, I was like, you guys are crying right now. Imagine if you were in your room, you'd be bawling your eyes out, like, in a, you know, a, a higher state of gratitude. Dude, like, I don't give a fuck. I was, I was just a little, crying, <laughs> I was just like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I was like, dun 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 dun, yeah. my kids, like, I don't care. Yeah. But it's, it's because of years of work to be able to cry as a man in a big ass group of strangers. And not care. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. Like, what are you gonna do? Laugh at me? Confidence. I don't care. Yeah. So, <laughs> dude, I'm, 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 I'm so pumped you're here. I'm so pumped that you're doing all the stuff that you're doing because you're making a real impact. Thank you. Like you made an impact on me and now I get to go home to my kids Triple. and like share Triple. that with yeah. them. Like, so I always get choked up. So my kids are three and five. Yeah. And I go speak all over the country and they think I go talk to superheroes. And like, dude, you're going to give them this book and you're going to sign it. And when they're older, they're going to read it because they know. I'm with real superheroes, like the, the real shit. Like, so for me, it's so important. Like superheroes aren't just like Spider-Man and Batman. They're real people. Like Ed Milet. Like, superhero. <laughs> superhero. Like My you, parents. Yeah, superheroes, superheroes, right? <laughs> so like superheroes are real flesh and blood and they're real people. So I get these books signed. So when they're old enough, they can read them and be like, oh, this is where dad was. With that super yeah, that's so cool. That is awesome. So it's really cool for me to just be, I'm gonna hand them a fucking stack. <laughs> yeah. of like, look, look at all these superhero books. Go to college or not, but like, you're gonna like, read this. <laughs> you're gonna read all of these because it's the it's it's the real stuff, my friend. Like, it's the perspective of the experience. It's all perspective. It's all perspective. Like, you're doing such a big thing right now. You and you've done so much already, but you continue to grow and expand. I'm addicted to growth and expansion, like for myself. Yeah. So, and you're killing it in China. You're Thank going you. back to China. Yeah. And you're like, I'm all in on speaking right now. This is your calling, man. Like, what you're doing Thank is you. so important. Thank you. I'm for just, like all generations. Uh, yeah, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. You know, like right? it's it's, and I and I and I'm I'm cut in between two things. I'm like, am I a freak accident or was I strategically put here because the world's a little messed up right now and they need some light? Like, what do you, you know, mean? like it's just, it's anything, it, it, whatever you believe in, right? 100%. It could be both. And 100%. so I, just, I like to think that I'm just like, um, like an Avenger and like, you know, the yeah. universe put me here. I was like, Hey, can you spread yeah. a little good here spread while you're here, while you're here? And then you can go back to like, you know, your soul, wherever your soul was. Like, That's right. I'm, I'm like that. And I'm a soul believer. And 
Me too. Like, different past life, like universe. I'm all. I'm mm. all. Of it. <laughs> Me too. I'm, I'm all in. And yeah. you're and you're a little bit of a freak because you decided for your first tattoo to get it on your fucking rib. Yeah, yeah. Like I have a huge rib yeah. piece. Yeah. I, I was, was 16. Dude, everybody out there, do hours. not get a rib piece as your first piece. <laughs> It'll be your last tattoo. <laughs> but yeah. it's legit. So, but you embrace your pain. You embrace the joy. You embrace it all. And it really translates in your message, man. So. Thank you so much I'm for giving for us time. Thank it. you so much. Now, again, where can everybody find you? You, yeah. have a, you have a huge story. Google him, Facebook, YouTube, everything. Go find him. Where can everybody find you? Yeah, most of my stuff's on Instagram. And um, Instagram, Facebook. And so it's Nick Santa Nastasso. You'll put the name because it's really long. But if you type in Nick Santo, I'll pop up. The guy with the no legs with a really long last name. Yeah. Um, but Instagram, Facebook, and um yeah, just like I said, I'm grateful for the opportunity that I can share some some superpowers with people and you know share that light. Dude, and follow his journey, and I I love what you just spoke about, with Casey, about like the koi fish and the dragon. Yeah, I have that whole story tattooed nice. in my leg, like the koi fish up the waterfall through the temples and become a dragon. This whole piece is a dragon. So like, dude, I love that story. Yeah, it's really powerful. I appreciate it. And that. actually speaks to who you are, man. Yeah. I think this, it's perfect. Just overcoming things, right? Like, that's, that's it, the right? journey. It's about the journey. It's, dude, the journey is everything. Actually, funny. The Russ says that. The journey dude, is everything. Dude, dude, the journey hey, is everything. Hey, hey. Dude, it was, dude, shout outs to Russ. Yeah, Russ, Russ is, we love you. Russ is the guy. So, this is tattooed in Sanskrit because it's just for me. Yeah. And I, I, I actually rarely share this. It's, I believe in the journey and I trust in the path. The art is in the journey and my life is a masterpiece. That's and dope. it's written in Sanskrit. That's dope. And it's just, because it's like, you get to choose your journey. Yeah, you're like the dictator. You're the architect. Uh, for sure. You get to write the whole thing. Yeah. Thank you again, my man, for taking Thank the you, time. Bro. Thank you. Dude, this dude lit it on fire <laughs> yesterday. If you're looking to book events anywhere in the world, call him. You're book him. He will crush the face off of your event. Thanks again, my man. We're out. Boom. Boom. Easy. I've been my kind of hustle since I was a kid. And I love it.